Hi, welcome to the second tutorial in my series on finding areas bounded by curves and the x-axis. Now in the first tutorial what I showed you was how we calculated the area bounded by a curve to the x-axis when that area was above the x-axis. We used this particular formula. Let's just show you. If we had a curve y equals f of x then the area bounded by the curve to the x-axis when it was above the x-axis was given by area equals the integral from a to b of that curve f of x with respect to x. What happens when it's below the x-axis? What happens if we use the same formula? Well, let's just see because there is a twist to this. If we take the curve y equals x bracket x plus 2, I've sketched it out here, it's a quadratic curve, a positive x squared curve, so it's going to be u-shaped. It crosses the x-axis when y is naught, and when y is naught, x will be naught, so it cuts at the origin here, and x plus 2 would be 0, making x equal minus 2. So this cuts the x-axis at minus 2. So we've got an area then below the x-axis. So if we work this out in the usual way, all right, let's just put this down here. This area would be equal to the integral of x going from minus 2 to 0, so just put that in, minus 2 to 0, of the equation of our curve, which in this case is x bracket x plus 2, x bracket x plus 2, we integrate that with respect to x. So before we can integrate it then, we need to make sure that we expand the bracket. So we get x squared plus 2x. Even though we've expanded it, we've got a couple of terms here. We're integrating all of it, so put that back in brackets with respect to x. We're integrating it from x going from minus 2 to 0. And if we integrate this in the usual way, by adding 1 to the power and dividing by the power, what we get is x cubed over 3. And for 2x, we get 2x squared over 2, which reduces down to x squared. Again, put that in square brackets with our limits at the end, going from minus 2 to 0. Substitute our limits in, starting with 0 for x and we get 0 here plus another 0, so that's 0 overall. Subtract what we get when we substitute the minus 2 in for x. So we get minus 2 cubed over 3, so that's going to be minus 8 thirds. And then we have plus minus 2 squared, so that's going to be plus 4. Work this out, minus 8 thirds plus 4 is 4 thirds. We've got a minus out here, and so what we end up with is minus four thirds. So we've got area equals minus four thirds. Hold on a moment, that can't be the case. Area can't be negative. It's always got to be a positive value. Well this always happens. This is the twist that I was mentioning about earlier. Whenever you work out area under a graph and that area is below the x-axis, you always actually end up with a negative value. So the area can't be negative 4 thirds, the area's got to be a positive value, so therefore the area is going to be 4 thirds, square units. But what I've got here is something that is very badly written. You can't say area equals a negative value and then change your mind and say that it's a positive value. It's got to be consistent. Well, as I said, whenever you work out area under the x-axis, it always turns out to be negative. So you'd see that coming in questions like this, or you should see it coming. So therefore, don't start with the word area, area equals. Just do the integral. If you do the integral, work it through, comes out as a negative value, and you can say therefore area equals 4 thirds square units. I'd also encourage you not to set your work out like this either. It's not great to put an equals directly underneath an integral. Okay? What you should really do is move this over to there and set it out like this. Okay? That's what I'd encourage you to do anyway. 
So that looks good. We've got our integral. Came out to minus 4 thirds as we expected because it's below the x-axis. Then you can say therefore a equals 4 thirds square units. Okay, well that brings us to the end of this tutorial. What I'm going to show you in a later tutorial is how we cope with questions where they ask us to find an area that is partly below the x-axis and maybe you've got an area trapped over here that is above the x-axis. We have to handle this in a different way. Anyway, for the time being then, that brings us to the end of this tutorial.